to be talking a little bit today about uh, Canva and some of the Canva features uh, that you have probably not seen or not getting a, a you know the ability to use. Um, and but before I do and before I jump into some of these Canva features, I at least want to mention the organizations that are bringing this to you today: uh, the Real Estate Technology Institute and Service for Life. Um, RETI is a great spot if you want to learn anything to do with technology uh, or some marketing for your business. Uh, getting an account over there is really awesome, and we appreciate Craig uh, for doing this with us on on a weekly basis. So, Craig, thank you so much. I am also an instructor over there. There are an incredible number of instructors. Uh, there are a bunch of associations that are already picking this up as member benefits uh, and have for a while now. So uh, definitely check out if your association is uh, is already using this and already has it as a member benefit. Uh, we got a few more folks, so I'll just say hello. Uh, Wichita, Kansas. Hello, Taylor. Uh, Linda from North Andover. Good to see you. Um, all right. And no, I, I'm, I didn't. I'm intrigued if that's is that is, if that's actually Cindy Ferguson's daughter. Or if she's, uh, you know, just kind of sneaking in here under her daughter's account. I mean, that's, that's that I need to know. I like it. Hey, <laughs> it's a good move either way. Either way you go, that's a good move. Right. Um, <laughs> all right. So, and then the other group that is bringing all of these series to you this year is the is Service for Life. This is my organization. Uh, if you are interested in building your business 100% referral basis, uh, past clients, really working that way and not having to chase leads. Uh, Service for Life has been helping agents do that for over 20 years at this point, and I've been lucky to take it over in recent years. So definitely check that out uh, if you haven't already. All right, so I think that about covers it for uh, what we're doing today and, and uh, who is putting this on. Are you ready to dive into some Canva features, Craig, uh, that, Absolutely. you know... Um, all right, so let me, there we go. So feel free to, Craig, dive in with your first one. Are we, we're going to do what? One, we're doing e two of each of us, right? Yep. And, and we're going to pass it back and forth. So you're going to do one, then I'll do one, then you can do one, then I'll do one. Uh, and hopefully we teach everybody some awesome tricks today. You ready? Sounds good. Yep. And I'm going to, and right. honestly, I'm going to spend a little bit of time in the elements area in Canva. Uh, a lot of people don't pay attention to it, know it's there. Um, and if they do, they're like, oh, I can throw a, a, a square onto a thing or whatever. But there's so many cool features under uh, Elements. And by the way, if you don't know uh, about Canva, we've covered it many times. We're going to be doing more uh, of these uh, webinars. And we're going to have, a, at the end of the month, another uh, master class on it because it's such an amazing program. I mean, it's up at all time. You can design anything you want in Canva, whether it's a flyer, social media post, video, animations, really anything. Uh, and just kind of show you if you down the left side where you have the ability to throw in templates and uploads and photos, there's an option there called elements. Um, and elements has a lot of different things. Uh, if I just want to, for example, and I was going to use a blank page here, uh, I want to throw in a shape. I could throw in a shape and change the color of it or whatever. Uh, and I use shapes a lot in, in my designs. For example, if you kind of look at this design here for one of my flyers, well, that's a great shape as a header, and then I just throw words and my logo on top of it, right? Um, so you can use shapes a lot of ways to change up color, change the design of what you're doing. Um, and if you go into the lines and shapes, there's tons of cool shapes, some with, some without borders. You know, you have circular ones, you have funny ones like a little hand thing here. And for any of these shapes, they're completely editable where you can change the colors of them. Maybe I want to make this more of a, ooh, that's not a pretty color. We'll go with more of an orange <laughs> there. Okay, I can change that outline color on it very easily. Okay, you can move things around, you can turn them. Like once you put a shape in, you can pretty much do anything you want with it, okay? So that's the first thing is there are lines and shapes. Um, there's also a whole category of graphics, um, which are more animated. So maybe I wanna throw in I don't know, like these little arrows pointing down. And now this wouldn't be great for a printed flyer, but for something like a social media post or anything like that, you can throw in animated graphics as well. And by the way, all these categories are, of course, searchable as well. So maybe I want to find one of a dog. Cute little corgi will throw them in here. Okay. 
Um, so Elements has a lot in here. And then if I back up, one of the main things that I want to show under Elements, I know you're going to be talking more about things like charts and stuff like that, um, is things like frames. So a frame, it doesn't matter how bad of an artist you are, it can make something look really nice and clean by using a frame. So if I throw this one in here that kind of looks like a badge, I think can go and find any picture. I'll just find a picture of myself. Where's my little folder of self? There we go, me. Um, and now if I throw this picture into that frame, it automatically sizes it and puts it into the frame and it looks like it's perfectly put in there. And let's just say it's off center, not the way I want it. I can double click and move it into the center where I want that, okay? Uh, so using frames allows you to have a really nice, clean look uh, without you having to be a good graphic designer. I can go back to the frames again, and maybe I want to throw in, and again, these are all under um, elements. Maybe I want to throw in that looks like a, a photo, right? Like an old Polaroid picture. And now let's go find a picture of... Yeah, we'll throw these oranges into there, okay? Boom, now it looks like it's in that Polaroid picture. And again, once they're in here, you can make them bigger, smaller, whatever you need to do. Uh, but frames allows you to have a really nice, clean look. And then the other thing is, just kind of quickly show this, if I want to kind of, let's say, build another design, okay? First of all, templates is already pre-done designs that already look nice and clean that somebody's already done really well at. Um, so I can find a nice looking template. Let's say we choose this one and this one has frames built into it. So obviously I don't want this picture of this woman's bra. I can say detach the image, get rid of the bra and now throw in a picture of me. Boom. Okay. I can do the same thing. I can go to this picture of this girl, detach the image, delete it. And we'll throw in that picture of me. And again, I love that one's it. a little Cindy, off center. I want to get it a little bit more where I'm in the Craig, middle of it. Just Craig, move it around. I, I gotta I gotta interject here. Cindy Sig says, okay, you have no idea how frustrated I am and never knew I could move it in the frame. Shake my head. <laughs> I yep. love it. That is exactly why we do these. It's exactly why exactly. we do these. Because there are these it's, little If you don't know about these features. things, they can be really frustrating. Okay. Uh, and by the way, the other thing you can do in um, that, uh, that uh, another one that a lot of people don't know about, give me the, I want to add a blank one, um, is also, again, we're all still under elements. So I'm going to get rid of the frames up in the search. And another great one is grids. Meaning if I want to design this from scratch, I don't want to use someone else's template, I can find the layout that I like. Okay? Yep. And now just as easily, I can now go grab that picture of the oranges and drop it into that box. I can grab this picture, drop it into that one. And I can now lay out these things the same way I would as using a template, but I'm building it myself and using a grid. So there's a lot of cool little tricks under elements Again, you can use frames, you could use shapes and lines, uh, you can have the grids, uh, you can do the frames where you can put pictures into different shapes. All yep. these things are all under the elements tab. And there's a lot of tricks you can do to really kind of make a design your own. And by the way, just so you know, once you put something in here, I can also now throw like words or anything I want over something it's a, it's like now it's a background i can still put things on top of them that blue is a little bit hard to read so we'll make it a dark color okay um but designing in canva honestly it's just playing around and, and finding out about some of these tricks but they are pretty easy to do once you know about them like the way cindy said she didn't know you could double click on a picture and move it around or i'm sure a lot of you guys might not have known that trick i showed where you could detach a picture from a frame Again, right click on it, detach image. Now you can put whatever picture you want into that frame instead. I love it. Nice one, Craig. All Thank right. You, so if folks have questions about this, uh, put them into comments, um, into the comments section. 
we will get questions answered. Uh, or if these things have helped you, please let us know in comments as well um, as we go today and, and drop some new other features and ideas and things for people to do. Uh, we would love to see in chat that folks um, that this has been helpful for folks. So definitely let us know that. So I'm going to uh, dive on over here and take over, Craig. And this is going to be a little bit of an extension on what you talked about with frames. But I'm going to give people a little bit of an easier way to work with some of these frames because they can get unruly at times. And uh, it's just one of the biggest things about design is things being aligned correctly to one another centering yep. on a page, centering within a frame, uh, two elements that are centered to each other. Um, those are really, really big and impactful things when it comes to designing anything you're doing. So I'm going to show you a couple little tricks uh, that I use, and this can be used in any sort of Canva template, so it doesn't really matter. I just picked Instagram posts for this one. Um, but let's go over, and we're going to go back into that element section that Craig was talking about, and I'm just going to drop an element right onto the page here. Uh, and onto the center. Now, you'll notice here, I can drag this around, and as I do, it'll start trying to fit to certain parts of the page. But what a lot of folks don't see is this little position button up here. If you click on position up at the top right, it'll give you the option to center this and align it to the page. So you can say, I want this middle and I want this center or I want this top and I want this left, and it will do that automatically for you. But that's not the total power of this because that's the basics um, and is something that I think a lot of people get you know, comfortable with or see outright. But I wanna show you some tricks inside of this that makes it uh, a little bit easier to use. So first of all, let's say we wanna add these two items together. I wanna to add, say, this little play button, but I want it to be on the outside, right? Now I can drag that to the outside here, great. So these all match up, they look wonderful. But what is gonna go a step further here is if you click on one of them, you click on the other one, you're gonna see a button right here that says group. Okay, now those two elements, you see that line in the middle disappear? Those two elements are now grouped together. So now let's say I have this here and I want to position, Positioning middle and center is done with the group. Okay, now we're gonna go one step further here. So we have this group that we can center or set to the frame or do anything like that that we want to. And then we're gonna add one more element here. Let's add this, say, red box. Now I want this, I want this over here, not necessarily centered or, or set up to the page in any way. And let's say I want this box centered over top of this. Well, what we can do now is click on the group. We can click on the item. And if we say position, it now says align elements, not align page. So I can say center, and now all of a sudden, these two elements are centered over each other. Now let's go one more step further. And I don't want this one to move, right? Lock, and, oh, come on now, uh, did all of them, sorry about that. So if you move this inside of this square box, so they're not outside of the frame, it's inside these two, you click on these, position, center, and now this box is not moved, and this is centered directly over top of it. So the trick here uh, is to group your items together, um, set up the groups, and then essentially align or position to those set groups um, as well as the page. So that positioning is a huge help when it comes to working in Canva and making things that really look you know, centered and aligned and set up correctly so you're not just guessing where you're trying to put stuff all over the page. Uh, you can very easily group and position accordingly. And, and to, if I could just throw one thing to clarify that, even though Alex is demoing this right now with three different shapes, anything could be grouped together, anything could be aligned together. It could have been text, it could have been a picture, it could have been anything. You can group unrelated things together and you can do the center alignments and everything he's showing if they're unrelated. They don't have to all be the same kind of thing. 
Yep, so I'll just show you that here. Uh, you can set up a picture, and this is where this gets kind of cool, is because you can say, okay, I want that text, and I want it to be centered on my image. Now, I want to lock that together. I want to group these things. I always try to do that. I always try to right-click them. And you can start setting these groups together, locking them together, moving them together, uh, doing all that sort of stuff very, very easily um, just because you're using those alignment uh, positioning features. Is it something folks were already doing? Is that something folks knew about? Is that, does that help you um, with your designs in Canva? I would love to know uh, down in chat. Anything else you want to add, Craig? Um, about, you just did it, but people might not have caught it. Um, show them real quick while you have this up, um, positioning, where they can move things forward and back uh, ah, in sure. order yep, yep, of display. Yep. Got it. So you'll notice that this box is behind these other items. And let's say I wanted to move this box to the front the whole way up. In that same position, you'll notice that there is a forward and a backward, okay? If I click on forward, it moves it one position upward. The other nice thing to, to notice is that a lot of these forward and backward are also available if you right click uh, onto that frame. So you can say, bring to front the whole way to the front, uh, or you can say, I wanna bend the whole way to the back. And it aligns it um, vertically so gary gary says layering absolutely that's exactly it yep. that's how you set exactly up your layers um great question gary and that's the the best way to do this is to group your items together and then set up your positioning and layering all in one place cool does that help all right anything else in grouping positioning anything like that that folks might be interested in have questions um, about well, I mean, the, the other thing I would just kind of quickly point out is like when something is grouped together, um, you let's say you want to resize. It resizes all the elements because they're kind of locked together. You wouldn't have to separately resize pool party. You wouldn't have to separately size the picture of that woman. If they're grouped together, it'll resize both things at the same time if you try to, you know, take the corners and make it smaller and, and resize it. Yep, absolutely. Great, great point, Greg. So yeah, grouping grouping is your best friend. Grouping and positioning are really your best friends when it comes to working inside um, of Canva. The other little trick I want to show everybody here is you notice how the send back, send forward also have these little control brackets or control alt brackets or ungroup as control shift G. Or let's say I wanted to group these things together. Right? So all of those items that you have have short keys. And learning those and spending a little bit of time learning those can make things very quick. Because with a couple keyboard hits, I can go from front to back or play with things or so on without having to use my mouse. Uh, it's also a big time saver when it comes to that. Um, is learning all the keyboard shortcuts for that. Cool. Yep. The other thing that, um, if you could switch back to me real quick, that I just thought about. Yep. Um, this is separate from what Alex is just teaching, just kind of back on what I was showing. Um, but the way I showed that you could, for example, detach an image from a frame, like the picture that was already in the frame, you can do the exact same thing, for example, with a background image. Um, so, for example, um, if you see here, this template that I chose has this background of the ocean with the sky and everything. Well, if I don't want that picture, I can right click on the background image, say detach image from background, and now it pops it out. And I could either, maybe I want to go back in and change it or crop it or whatever I could do that, or replace it with a totally different picture. Okay, so we'll just throw her in really quickly. She's becoming our... Yeah, not big enough. Let me just find a bigger picture real quick. Uh, 
I think I'm going to have to stretch this guy out real quick. It doesn't look like it automatically takes it to the background. But um, but here's an example again. Like we just showed you, now I could say position all the way to the back, and now it's the background. Yep. Now, so Ann brings up a point, says, I love shortcuts. Where do you find those? Uh, I just posted a, an infographic, but I'm going to take you back over here. Um, Canva makes this available. So right on the Canva uh, site, there's a Canva shortcuts infographic. Uh, and I blew this up for you. So you can take a look here. Move elements by one pixel are just your arrows. Move elements by 10 pixels are shift in arrows. Um, center aligning text. Paste styles other shortcuts. There's a whole ton of shortcuts that they make available. And, and just so everybody knows, this isn't, uh, this isn't new. Most of these shortcuts are directly out of either Illustrator or uh, other graphic design programs that have done this and used these same keyboard shortcuts for years and years and years. So if you're comfortable using something like Illustrator or using a, a much more advanced design program, most of those shortcut keys are going to automatically adapt over for you. Um, and there's some hidden ones behind the scenes that they don't even document. So I would just keep trying the ones that the other graphic design programs use. Uh, but this is the infographic. I pasted that into chat as well. Um, and that's the right to the image itself. Um, and you can download that image and check out all of those uh, shortcut keys if you want to. And the other option is, like Alex was showing, and I showed it as well, when you're doing something in Canva, let's say you're clicked on to a picture, you're clicked on to text or whatever, right-click your mouse, and you typically will see a lot of the keyboard sh shortcuts in your right-click menu. Absolutely. All right, so we covered two. You want to go for a third, Craig? Yeah, why not? All right. <laughs> All right, so... We showed you a bunch you could do in Elements. Um, one thing I didn't show, and this may might come in, because um, I know, like, I don't want to steal your thunder if, it's what, if you're going to cover this next week uh, in the one you're going to do on doing a great listing presentation. Uh, but another, the other item I haven't talked about under Elements is charts. Um, so, for example, let me just... <laughs> Um, oh, you beat, you, you beat can me create the your own custom oh, all right, fine. charts, put them I... in here. Steal, steal in mine. I see how it is, Craig. Well, you're going to do a full presentation. I'm just showing how <laughs> if I say I want to put in this bar chart, this bar graph chart, you can actually fill in the data over on the left and make it a, a real bar chart with your data in there. Yep. So it's just a, I'll going to go way more in depth with this uh, next week and his how to create a you know great listing presentation in Canva. But data is a big key to a listing presentation. But if you just want to throw this on a flyer, you know, your sales data or your market, days on market, whatever it is, you can very quickly and easily build your own charts in here as well. I mean, Canva really does almost everything these days. Yep, absolutely. And we'll get into this uh, next week. We're going to do one on uh, creating listing presentations inside of Canva. Um, they do a really great job of that as well. So I'm going to be covering that in more depth. And as part of that, we're going to be getting into, um, you know, charts and things of that nature, graphics. Uh, one of the really, really nice things about charts is the fact that you can change any of this stuff on the fly and just easily create templates where, you know, you set up all these charts to begin with. And then all you have to do on a monthly basis is go back, change out some data. So, for example, this one we see here, it's just a percentage chart, okay? Um, but we can change this over to, a, say, a progress bar. And we can add percentage labels and all that sort of stuff to it very, very easily. So we're going to cover that in some more depth uh, next week in listing presentations. But we want to at least show everybody that this is a feature. Um, and this is something that a lot of people don't necessarily think about using Canva for, but it's a, a very good tool to do that. Um, and by the awesome. way, when Alex talked about how you can update pretty easily, I mean, in that the top right corner is that little duplicate button. If you want to come back and use the exact same chart the following month and then just update the stat changes, you just duplicate that design and make the two second changes. Yep, exactly. So it's just very, very easy to create a template out of this and make a couple data changes. And all of a sudden you have a brand new infographic for next month. 
You have a, a brand new update for everybody um, that's branded, that looks like you, that's, you know, styled the way that you want it to. That's just, you know, set up in the way it should be. So um, definitely something to uh, to play with and have fun with. All right. Um, any others, Craig? Is there Are there any questions from folks? Do we, is there any others that we want to cover today for features for folks? Um, I mean, I, there's tons more. It's just what we can cover today. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. We are doing, again, more of these webinars. We have our master class in a few weeks where we can go nuts on just about everything. Yep. But we wanted to share just one or two kind of hidden tricks. I kind of went through everything under elements. But there's all kinds of stuff like this in the Canva, guys. You just got to, if you haven't used it, get in there and play. And if you can't figure it out, find a geek. <laughs> That's uh, pretty much how that works. Um, all right. So I'm going to, uh, I just want to bring up one more thing here. Um, show folks what is coming up next uh, because we have some great uh, webinars and some great content that is coming up um, in the coming weeks. And uh, Craig, do you mind posting these in the chat um, while sure. I do this? Absolutely. Or awesome. All right. So we've got um, three presentations coming up, um, two that are totally free and a third that is a masterclass that we have uh, at the end of the month that we are diving into uh, all the details, everything you could pretty much want to know uh, about Canva. So first off, we have a Canva listing presentation uh, topic next week, and we're going to teach you how to create five star listing presentations um, inside of Canva. It makes it very, very easy to uh, use in a lot of different places. And here's the other thing is sometimes, even if you're going to use, uh, you know, Google Slides, you're going to use PowerPoint, you're going to use Prezi, you're going to use any of these other tools. A lot of times it's very easy to come in and do one or two of the graphics or one or two of the slides that are much more graphical. Uh, inside of something like Canva. So just because you might still want to use um, any sort of presentation, PowerPoint, whatever it might be out there, it doesn't mean you can't use Canva to supplement that. Uh, we're going to show you how to do that. Next, we have on 823, we have Canva branded templates. Um, Craig's going to really spearhead this one. We're going to be going through talking a little bit about how to set up your own branded template, your color schemes, get your brand going inside of Canva so that it's very, very easy uh, to create any, take any of these templates um, and set them up with your design. And then last but not least, on 830, we've got the Canva Masterclass. Um, we've done this a couple times already. The turnouts have been awesome and people have walked away absolutely loving it. Um, you'd be amazed what sort of content. Uh, in fact, I was just meet, met with somebody recently who had her assistant uh, join the class and said that her assistant has been doing some just incredible work inside of Canva um, simply because the assistant joined our class. So definitely check that out. Um, We've got those coming up and we've got the links inside of the comments as well. Uh, Fred, anything else? Um, the only thing I've mentioned is the two, the next two uh, webinars, the Canva listing presentation and brand templates are free events like we do all the time. The masterclass is paid, um, but we always do our kind of early bird special. So if you sign up soon now or anytime soon, you do save a little bit of money if you sign up for that masterclass now, if you wait till close to it, you do end up paying a little bit more money. So if you uh, are interested in the masterclass, again, you might want to do it now and let us know if you sign up. Absolutely. So I'll, um, I'm just going to uh, share here quickly that the, for the folks who are doing it, you're going to learn how to save time by setting up your account with your brand. You're going to be able to create highly engaging social media posts that drive business. We're going to show you how to design a postcard or a letter that gets read and responded to. We're going to show you how to build captivating video, uh, specifically shorter uh, type video. And then we're going to uh, include three bonuses with the course. Um, so they're three time tested custom templates that you can go use that same day inside of your business. So we're going to include all of those. Those bonuses just by themselves are worth more than uh, what we're doing the class for. So definitely yeah. <laughs> um, get signed up because uh, and save yourself a little bit of money by getting signed up early um, because it is definitely uh, a worthwhile investment in your business. So we have a question here from Ann. Uh, Ann says, I have a question about branding. I'm a TC who works with agents from different brokerages. Can I set up more than one logo scheme for the different agent clients? If you have a paid account, then yes, absolutely you can. 
Um, and if you want to show my screen real quick, I'll show exactly yep. what you're talking about. There you go, um, with a pro account, which, you know, with Canva, um, you're able to set up more than one brand and color scheme. Um, so if you guys can see my screen where I have RETI, Remax, Palmer House, those are three different companies with three different company color schemes, which you do the same thing with the logos as well. So as long as you have that pro account, you can do what you're asking about, Ann. Absolutely. Great question. Great question. And we're going to get more into that uh, on 823. Um, we're going to get more into that uh, uh, when Craig goes into branded templates and uh, and how to set those up. So that's another free workshop. If you haven't already, uh, link is in the comments. Uh, Craig posted that there. That's going to be the 823 one. So make sure you click that notification. Uh, mark yourself as going so that you get the notifications yep. and you are sure to <laughs> attend. All right. Anything else? Any other questions? Well, I'm just going to mention one more time that uh, this is brought to you all by uh, two organizations, the Real Estate Technology Institute, something I'm involved um, with. Uh, Craig is the founder over there. Awesome, awesome group. Um, definitely check that out if you're interested in anything to do with uh, tech or improving marketing in your business. Definitely check that out. Um, and then, of course, my group, Service for Life. Uh, if you are interested in growing a 100% referral-based business, past clients, not having to worry about chasing leads all the time, but really having business that comes into you, uh, we have been helping agents do that for a very, very long time and continue to successfully do so. So if you're interested in that, check out serviceforlife.com.